Hi, this is Dr. Jenny and we're winding down our videos in Unit 3. We're dealing with a problem today uh, that is looking at finding out the bond value of $1,000 bonds. This company is trying to raise $600,000 uh, for an improvement, but they're going to issue bonds. Well, the thing about bonds is you may plan for this well in advance and have the bonds printed and you're going to have those you're not going to the company itself won't sell the bonds they'll have they'll actually hire someone to do that so the bonds are printed up way ahead in advance so they may have a stated rate that makes sense at the time but when they get ready to sell them investors may require a higher rate of return and that's what happens here remember when market rate is higher than stated rate bonds will sell at a discount so we would expect that these bonds will be less than a thousand dollars this problem has a slightly different wrinkle because it's stated semi-annually that so let's let's talk about that a little bit as I uh, bring this problem up uh, first I'm going to use my function key here uh, and I want to use present value and I have that listed first but if you don't you can just type it up in here and say go and it'll it'll bring it up and so once I have my function argument here we're going to kind of look at how we would work through this the first thing we have to know remember we always use the market rate when we're looking for the rate here um, at this at this point we're going to use the actual stated rate when we get down to the payment but what we have to do is we have to divide this by two because it essentially we are uh, when you're semi-annually you're going to work with that interest rate on a you know every six months it's the same kind of principle as as looking at your credit card statement if your credit card statement is at uh, something I'm going to use an easy number let's say your credit card statement is 12 percent 12 percent and that's horrible but let's say it's that what you're going to see on your statement then is going to be a one percent per month and so one per it, it's essentially um, you know they break it down based on on how it's paid now as far as the number of periods we would think maturity of being 10 but what what we're going to find here is that we want to multiply that times 2 because we're talking about the time number of times we actually work with that consumer so we're going to talk we're going to work with them once every six months so obviously 20 times when we look with the payment we're going to be taking the uh, eight percent and we're going to multiply that times the thousand but we have to again divide that by two because eighty dollars is what we're giving them in a year but we're going to give it to them forty dollars uh, in the first six months and the other forty at the end our future value is still the thousand dollars and what we're going to see when we get done here is that we have a $875 um, dollar bond value. Now I put the negative sign in my uh, present value formula because it is a positive amount that we're going to come here. And what you realize now when you look at this bond value, um, you probably see see that we're we're going to have to sell more than 600 bonds to come up with to raise this $600,000. So essentially what you'll need to do is just take the 600,000 uh, divide it by this 875 to come up with a, a number of bonds that you need to have and you might need to round that off. Um, then in C when it talks about the firm's after tax cost of debt, um, remember how this works. With interest expense we're going to reduce our, our income. So we actually get to deduct that as an expense and so that's why what they're getting at here they're wanting to say um, you know if you have a tax rate of 34 percent what's the after-tax cost of this debt and essentially um, what we're doing is we can take our 10 percent rate which is our true rate and we're multiplying it times 1 minus our 0.34 tax rate and that um, if I put my little equal sign in here that is giving us a um, percentage and that's tell I'm going to go ahead and add a decimal in there too and that's telling us what our after ta after tax cost would be of this debt so hopefully this will help you 
uh, work through this problem and uh, remember we've worked through a bond problem before but we've not done not done a semi-annual one so hopefully this will help you get off to the right track and I look forward to working with you on some of our final videos here in unit 3 thanks for watching